Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to do a little scroll saw work on this Bart Simpson character on this 5.5 millimeter plywood. Now the idea is to cut out all the larger sections, all these sections here, basically just leaving the black lines, the thin lines all the way around, and then we'll attach that to the same size backer and basically inlay it all with resin. Now normally you would use painter's tape and you would line your plywood with the tape like so. Spray on a little bit of glue and then you can just stick your template down like so and cut it out. Now for sake of five minutes I pop in carbon paper underneath or graphite paper and let you draw around that. It takes a matter of minutes and that way you can use that template over and over again. I think I've used this one three times so far. So we can certainly use that another day, should we need be. So we remove the carbon paper. And there's our little template for today. You can just about see that. And that's plenty enough for what we want. So I've shaded in the areas we're going to remove, which is these bigger sections. Alternative option for this would be to do your backer as we've drawn out there, as you can see. And you could cut out and remove the actual lines, saving the larger sections. And you could paint that the colours needed, red, yellows, whites, and stick them onto that. And that would be another option regarding the projects. We're going to go the total opposite way. We want to remove all these and just leave us that little thin frame all the way around. Okay. So far, so good. So it's all transferred on this little 5.5 millimeter plywood, like I say, and it measures in at five inches by 14 inches. I have routed this out on a previous project and we'll bring, bring him over towards the end of the video so we can see the difference. But for this one, it's going to be scroll saw work. Okay, quick talk about the blades before we start cutting this one out. Right, just a quick one before we do start cutting this Bart Simpson character out. There's literally uh, three types of blade. You get a pin blade. They've obviously got pins at both sides. They come on your more basic saws. And you can actually just get away with this pin blade on this project, I've just noticed. And the idea is that you have the pin that hooks at the top and bottom. You want the T facing towards you. And the one feels smooth on the way down, if we get it the right way around. Smooth, and then you want to feel that roughness on the way up. That way you know you've got your blade in the right way. Like I say, you might just get away with it on this project because it's not too small. However, if you're doing more delicate work, they brought out a pinless blade. There's also no pins on that. They come on your more fancier saws with a clamp at top and a clamp at bottom. Same again, teeth at the front, smooth on the way down, rough on the way up. And they're ideal for delicate work where you've got to drill a little pilot hole and squeeze that little pinless blade in. Obviously, you wouldn't get in. I can just flick that over and show you. Like I said, on this one, we're not too bad. If you imagine a small section, which is the smallest we've got. This one here. By the time we've drilled our little pilot hole, we're not going to fit, fit that in there because those pins are in the way. So, ideally, you would use a little pinless blade. You imagine a little hole there. Look, there's a pilot hole. I've done a sample. That will fit in there nicely. We're going to do those holes into every section so we can fit our blade in and cut that section out remember whereas with a pin blade you're also not going to fit it in that hole because the pins are in the way so it's a personal thing you find what works for you for me personally i like spiral blades the good thing about spiral blades they cut in any direction because they are spiraled the full length they still want to feel smooth on the way down and rough on the way up and they're a pinless blade, unfortunately, so if you've got the fancy saws, you'll manage that okay. If, like me, on my old drapper, I have to use these adapter clamps. They slow you down slightly, but I'm in no rush. We're just here to nice, fun projects. And the idea is you put your blade into the clamp, a little Allen key, tighten it up, top and bottom, and you would hook that on the same way you would hook on a pin blade. Okay, so spiral blades for me, Pegasus number five. Might be a little bit big for this 5.5mm, but I use it on everything from 3mm 
up to just short of two inches thick wood. So, so we're ready to cut out now. Just before we do, we'll literally just drill all our pilot holes. Remember, it's basically just going to be like those little ones here. We'll drill holes like this. I'm just going to use a Dremel with a flexi cable on. I've actually got an engraving bit on there. I've not even gotten a drill bit. But that's enough to make those holes in every section on there. We'll do that quickly and then we'll be straight on cutting it out. Right, you can see from that we've drilled all our pilot holes, no problem. And we've also just put the sand down at the back there. So, personally myself, the bigger I can drill that hole, the better, because I feed my blades in from the bottom and it just makes it a little bit easier. But obviously on smaller bits like that section there and those there, we have no option but drill small holes. So remember, when we're removing all the larger sections on this, all that area that we've put the little pencil marks on just for me personally make it a little bit easier i'm just going to split it in two pieces like that you could cut that on one piece if you prefer to hold a bigger piece i just think i'll find it a little bit better if i cut it down so i'll literally just cut this in half nothing fancy to see there and then i think we'll cut out the backer first and then we'll start on the main character there right you can see from that just literally just cut that down in the two sections there nothing too fantastic we'll put him to one side this character there and literally just cut out the back of first that's a nice and easy one and once that's to one side we can focus on the other one remember we've got our blade in now look nice that's a ping ping sound most swords you get a bracket or a lever at the back and you can just take up that tension till you get the right sound and unfortunately with my old drapper I've got to use the adapter clamps at the top and at the bottom there. Okay, let's start cutting this one out and see what we have. Right, you can see from that, we've got our backer cut out. And hopefully, when we cut the rest of the character out, it should fit on there somewhere in there. Another option would be to do what they call a stack cutting. Whereas you put two pieces of the ply together. And as we cut out the end character, the last one, should I say. You basically cut round the two pieces at the same time. That way, you know, your backer will be exactly the same shape as our topper we're going to call it so similar to that join your two pieces of wood together stick them together it's only a temporary stick remember and as you cut round the outer edge on this one obviously it will cut the back at the same time and you should have some somewhere near but that doesn't matter as once we stick that on there we'll go around a bit of sandpaper and make it fit right let's feed our blade through one of our little pilot holes I prefer to do the smaller sections first, just gives you some more to hold on to, and it's a bit more firmer. So let's start cutting the main character out now.
Right, you can see from that, we've gone all the way around with our Pegasus number no. 5 spiral blade. Now all we need to do now is literally just cut this away from the surrounding wood. And obviously that's just a simple case of following the outer line. Basically, exactly the same as what we've done there. So you've already seen me cut that out. So I'll just cut this out quickly. And then when we come back, we'll do a little bit of tidying up on the back. I'll literally just get a bit of sandpaper. I'll just get those little nodules off. Sort it all out. I did notice on here I had one little chip away, just on his ear there. I don't know if you can see that. But we're lucky enough that we just basically just sanded that down to an angle. And we did the same on that side. And that just finished it off nicely. So no big disaster there. So I'll literally just cut this out quickly and then come back when we're on for sorting out how it fits on top of the backer. You can see from that, we've gone all the way around. We've cut that out nicely, no problem. So there's our general shape that we are after. Nothing's broken off as yet, as we say. You will find with spiral blades, you get these little nodules, I call them. But you can just, just go around, it's a matter of minutes, just to get those little bits off. If you prefer, there's certain files out there, like so, just get a nice file and you can sand that off just as easy, just to make it nice and smooth. You could also use the rotary tool if you want to, just pop it in there, the top right hand corner. Right, so I just quickly tidy this up, bit of sandpaper, and then when we come back, hopefully, we'll be ready for sticking this on like so. So that's going to be our finished project. Once we put the painting, obviously, and glued it down, and then we'll look at the resin side of things. What I'll do is just basically glue them together, and then we'll go around, and where it's maybe not so perfect, we'll just get our bit of sandpaper, make it all nice and flush, or even a little sanding drum on a Dremel, and we'll just give it an all a nice tidy up, shall I say. So, I'll give it a quick tidy up with sandpaper, with the sandpaper, should I say, and when we come back, we'll be ready to glue this on. Right, that's enough general tidying up for me. We're ready now to stick this together. Now on previous projects, I would be quite happy just to brush some resin on there and use that as the glue. But I've literally just gone and purchased some wood glue, so I'm gonna use it. And that was just a simple case of covering all this back piece with it, like so. We can use our fingers and whatever. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure you cover it all Big like that. Because any gaps, I mean, I've noticed on the back of here, there's certain little bits that maybe just popped off there, look. Resin will find its way underneath there. So, we want to make sure we get plenty on. Doesn't matter about any overflow, should we call it, when we put it together. We can wipe that off. Or remember, your resin's going to cover all that. So don't be overly concerned. So we get the general idea from that. I'll cover all this completely. And I'll come back when we're ready to press it down onto our little backer piece. Okay, that's gonna be near enough what we want. We'll get plenty of clamps on this one. Little mini clamps like this are ideal, and we just go all the way around, make sure it's all nicely stuck down. Don't forget, we've got three little floaters here that we've uh, cut out. So we've got an eye there to go in, and there'll be an eye there. Which I'll stick on in a minute, off camera, and that's the, the little ear piece. So that's to stick in there as well. Okay. Next time we come back, this will all be clamped down and then we'll just leave it for a day. Right, this is what a little bit of clamp overload looks like. Okay, so we glued it down, we've stuck him on, we've done all our clamps in place. If you haven't got any clamps, you could have put a board on there 
a couple of weights on top would have been just as easy and you just notice we've got the eyes back in place here and that's it that's all we can do for now so hopefully that will all be nicely sealed when we come to put our resin in Right, that's it. Everything's nice and solid. We took our clamps off. Now it's just a case of going round and we just want to do these sides just so they're a bit more flush and lined up nicely. Now it seemed a bit over the top putting the wood glue over everything. But remember, that's to seal the wood. Because you have one little gap in here. And I can guarantee you, once you put your resin in, it's going to leak through. And leak through the other side so ideal world you would just stick these on with a couple of dabs of super glue everywhere but remember it's not going to be sealed proper so that's the reason why i've used the wood glue before anybody comes on and says you could have used super glue okay right general tidy up we'll get the little dremel on and then we'll just do a bit of sanding down on these sides just so it's all a bit more flush and then we'll get on to the painting side of things. Right, that's enough general tidying up for me. We use the sandpaper and I also use a sanding drum on a flexi shaft. And basically it went all the way around like so. And we've got that more or less fairly near for what we need. So we're happy enough with that. So the next stage now is just to paint all the surrounding areas the actual black outlines we're going to call them i'm just going to use painters touch paint and it's just a case of putting it on hopefully with the paint as well just painters touch it will hopefully seal any little gaps that we've got there there shouldn't be any to be honest but any little void any little mishaps we can put our paint on like so and literally just seal that up like that and obviously hopefully we won't see any joint when we're done so it's a case of just painting all that on you could spray it and i sprayed the last project but i just thought the paint brush paint would go on slightly thicker and we'll do all these top sections like so and all around it and we'll go down it doesn't matter if we're going to there we can literally just throw it on in there remember we're going to cover it all with resin right i'll come back when this is all nicely painted and hopefully we'll be ready to pop our resin in right that's all nicely painted you can just see from that literally while i had the paint out i went for the back as well and we've got them sides nicely covered now i apologize for the lighting i will invest in some proper lights eventually but for now this will do for it. So there's our little template already. And we're basically just going to fill it all in with some nice coloured resin. Now the resin I like to use, and I've used four or five different types. My favourite at the moment is a Vista one. It's a two-part resin. And you mix by volume. Some resins you will mix by weight. So make sure you read your labels. So by volume, it's one-to-one. -one. So basically, whatever amount of A we use, We'll, the resin will do exactly the same amount of B, the Ardner. I like to use these little cheap party cups. They're ideal because they do have little grooves on the side. So I'll basically count up five, six, seven of them of A. We've actually gone for four today. We can always mix some more, plenty of time. Don't panic about the stuff. And obviously the Ardner B, four of that as well. So we'll tip something to there, something to there. And then you basically just mix the two together. They do recommend a third container to put them both into. I basically just pour B, because it's a quick flowing one, into A. And that works fine for me. Now once we've mixed all that off camera, we need to add a bit of colour in. Personally myself, I'm just using cheap acrylic paints at the moment. These work no problem whatsoever. So obviously we've got a red, a yellow, a white, and a bit of blue thrown in there as well. There's powders out there, inks, dyes, I've got bags of them. So you can use whatever you prefer to use. But I'm going to go for acrylic paints and for mixing purposes. 
just cheap plastic knife and fork party ones. They're ideal because you can mix it and they have a nice little scoop on there. And so if you get some tight areas, you can just scoop that and just trickle it in steady away like that. Okay, so there's our colours all sorted. Just like I say, just cheap acrylic paints. So I'll mix, I'll mix the resin off camera and then we'll come back when it's time to pop a bit of colour in. Right, there's all our resin nicely mixed up. I'd rather go with smaller amounts than mix one big cup full and have wasted and have time on your side. It's quite warm today, so temperatures can uh, interfere with the curing. It's going to be a lot faster, so just be aware of that. So we'll go for yellow first, just the yellow, cheaper yellow acrylic paints. I'll try and get a bit on here just to show you how much we're going to pop in. Is there any in here, he says? Whoops, well that'll do, that'll look dollops worth. So we'll just case of mixing that in. And if you feel the yellow is not strong enough, you can literally just add a little bit more. Give it a good mix round. Quick as we can. Now I'd like that a little bit thicker. I do like my nice strong bold colours. So we'll pop a bit more in. Don't go too daft. They do say that if you add too much of any colour it can interfere with the curing of the resin. Be it acrylic paints or powders or whatever. So 10% I always got mentioned once before. Personally myself, that's not something I've ever had much interest with. I just, I just mix it in and get it in. Okay, that being near enough to start it off with. So it's just a simple case of filling it in. I'll speed up the process because once you've done one colour, it's basically the same process over and over again. So we'll just start up up here on his little face. Basically pour that in like so. It will find its own level as you go along. But get yourself a nice cocktail stick. And then you can just help it get into those tighter corners like so. Yeah, we get the general idea from that, don't we? I'll continue. We'll see this better in daylight than actually seeing it now. So we'll come back when this is all nicely filled in. And just remember, have your gloves on, plenty of ventilation and put a nice mask on. Right, that's that all nicely filled in. You notice here, we go with a little lighter, I have to put each colour in, and all those bubbles will just disappear and hopefully give us a nice, smooth, shiny resin. So that's it, so we've filled it all in. We're gonna leave it now for a good 24 to 48 hours, and we'll come back and we'll see what this little project is like. Get a nice cover for it, put a tray over it or something, because any dust, ears, flies, they're going to find it. So cover it all up and we'll come back in 24 hours. Right, it's been a good 24 hours later. Everything's nicely set. I would leave this for a couple of more days just to make sure. On some resin groups, they reckon it takes 30 days to fully cure resin. I have my personal opinions on that, but it's entirely up to you. Do your research on your resins. There's different types for deep pores, casting resins, thin pores. So a little bit of research would definitely wouldn't go amiss. But for 24 hours, that's nicely solid. We've certainly got no issues with that. That woodwork glue definitely done its job. 
and we glued those two sections together and we've had no leakages and that's no problem with that whatsoever for hanging purposes i'll literally just put a little loop on the back there or you could make yourself a nice little base and have it freestanding like so if you remember previously at the start of the video i have done this project before there's a little routed out one so we literally just routed out all the area put paint in sanded it down and then did the black frame or you can use a scroll saw cut it out inlay with resin and there we go so it's another option this one obviously will be outdoors this one's going to go indoors with the resin so there we have it this little project is finished if you remember it's on 5.5 millimeter hardwood for the backer and the same for the framework itself hardwood plywood we cut it all out on a scroll saw with a pegasus spiral number five spiral blade then we glued it all together with wood glue and that's definitely served its purpose and then we inlaid it all with vista one resin mixed with acrylic paints and that's it this little project is a finished give it a go just enjoy yourself and have a bit of fun you'll make a project somewhere along the line Thank you very much for watching.